We live in a society where everything comes with a lot of advertising copy, talking about all the benefits you'll gain by buying this or mortgaging that. Even meditation comes with advertising copy about all the gains you can't get from meditating. But when the Buddha taught meditation, he didn't start with the gaining side. He started with the giving side. When he talked about the Four Noble Truths, which are basically truths that are focused on the fact that you're suffering and there's a way out. Even before he talked about the Four Noble Truths, he would prepare people's minds with what he called the graduated discourse. And the graduated discourse started with giving. The, how wonderful it was to give, what good mind states you would develop by giving. But you gain the mind states, you gain the rewards by giving first. And after giving came virtue. All the good things that come when you give up certain kinds of behavior. So the principle is there. You have to give before you get. And it's good to carry that attitude into the meditation. You're going to have to give up a lot of time. You're going to have to give up all the thoughts that you could have thought about, allowing your mind to wander around as it likes. And you're going to focus on one thing. And the rewards of that one thing may not appear right away. You have to give some time to it. You have to give some energy to it. And in the course of sticking with the one thought, you find there are a lot of other things you have to give up as well. The practice is a lot of that giving up, giving up a lot of your likes and dislikes. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha told Rahula, make your mind like earth. Earth doesn't react to negative things thrown on it. Dirt, garbage, doesn't react at all. He said, make your mind like fire. Fire can burn garbage and it doesn't get upset doesn't react, doesn't get disgusted. Make your mind like water. Water can be used to wash away garbage, but it's not upset. Make your mind like wind. Wind can blow all kinds of trash around, but the wind doesn't get disgusted by the trash. You need to think in these ways as you meditate and as you practice in general, because there are things that the mind finds that it doesn't like about the practice. Some people don't like chanting. Some people don't like the work periods. Some people don't like the precepts. But it's never a question of whether you like them or not. This is what the training is. And so you have to learn how to step back from your mind and step back from the reactive side of the mind and say, I'm just going to do this. Give this some time. Give it an opportunity. Have an open mind about what you have to give up. Have an open mind about the things you have to do that you don't like. Give it a chance to see what beneficial impact it will have on your mind. When you read the biographies of the Great Ajahns, you find again and again that they reached a point in the practice where things seemed to be leveling out, reaching a plateau, and nothing new was happening. And so they had to stop and ask, what do I need to give up now to ratchet up the practice? And that was how they were able to come out winning. The Buddha himself said the secret to his awakening was that he never let himself rest content with skillful qualities. In other words, as long as he saw that there was still something more to do, still some dis-ease, some sense of stress, some sense of suffering in the mind, he wouldn't rest content. He was trying to figure out what more had to be given up but more had to be abandoned. Of course, the path isn't all about abandoning, it's also about developing. But to develop, you have to you know, give up a certain amount of time, a certain amount of energy. So you have to learn how to give in a lot of ways you might not have expected. After all, the Buddha's analysis of suffering is the clinging aggregates. And the clinging aggregates are how we define our, who we are. So we're going to have to give up how we define who we are. That's a pretty radical giving up. 
So you work at it from the beginning. Anything that you see is obviously unskillful, you give it up. Even if it's not all that obvious, you say, well, give it a chance. And John Lee was talking about how when he was a young monk, and he was reading about the Buddha extolling the virtues of going into the forest, and as a young man, he had lived in a village near a great forest, and he never saw any advantage of going into the great forest. It was a place of danger, a place of discomfort. But as he said, he saw that the Buddha and all the great disciples said there was something really good about going out and living in the forest, so he said, okay, I'll give it a try. It wasn't easy. They're talking about eating only one meal a day, well, give it a try, even though it wasn't easy. And he found that putting himself under the, under the training rather than stepping aside from the training and talking about how much he disliked it, putting himself under the training, he found that he learned a lot that he wouldn't have learned otherwise. There's that Zen saying that the great way is easy for those with no preferences. That doesn't mean that you don't prefer to put an end to suffering, that you do prefer that. But whatever comes up in the path that you have to do, you decide, oh, I'll do it regardless of whether I like it or not. And then you make your mind like earth, so it doesn't sit and complain about giving things up. You can view all this with a certain amount of calm. You step back from it and say, okay, there must be a part of the mind that doesn't like this. Well, this is a part of mind that I would continue to want to identify with, or is it something I need to give up? Then you'd be better off giving up. So when you have that attitude that this is a practice where you give, you may be giving up a lot of things you like, but you get something much better in return. The getting comes from the giving. The Buddha never has you give anything up without the sense that you gain something better from letting go. After all, that's a lesson in the third of the Noble Truths. You let go of the craving, and that's the end of suffering. It's not the clinging aggregates are clinging to you, you're clinging to them. That's something you have to let go of. But when you let go, then there's freedom. And the trade is more than worth it. Just don't let your likes and dislikes get in the way. Develop that mind like earth. Because that's what will hold you in the practice, just as the earth is supporting, supporting us right now. That mind like earth will support your practice for a long time.